This is Ling 270, Language, Technology, and Society. In this module, we are examining modern speech technologies. This includes automatic speech recognition and speech synthesis. One of the important components in automatic speech recognition is the acoustic model. The acoustic model is used to help take a speech signal, such as a user speaking to a smartphone saying, hey Siri, will it rain today? Taking the input from the microphone, which is a digitized speech signal, and extracting features. We've previously shown in earlier videos how to extract features. If you want a refresher, you can check out that other video and look at the documentation, for example, on Wikipedia for MEL frequency capstro coefficients. So, for any given time frame in our speech signal, we have a list of features, a feature vector. We want a recognized sequence of phones. Remember that phones are the basic units of speech. So once we've extracted features, the next step is to use a technology called a hidden Markov model, here represented by this cute little train, to go from a list of feature vectors to a list of hypothesized phones. This will eventually involve a lexicon, but before we get to the lexicon, let's go over to the whiteboard and work through together a little bit of the technical details of how a hidden Markov model works. So, let's start with a simpler example. In the book, uh, there's a great example talking about temperature and trying to reconstruct temperature. Uh, there are other really good uh, descriptions that you can find online, including an amazing spreadsheet by, interactive spreadsheet by Jason Eisner at Johns Hopkins University. I would strongly recommend that if you're interested in how a hidden Markov model works in more details, to find one of Jason's videos and his downloadable Excel spreadsheet. I know, how often do you recommend an exciting Excel spreadsheet? that uses ice cream and temperature to interactively uh, demonstrate hidden Markov models in action. The idea here is that at any given point in time, you have some sort of an observation. In a simple case, the observation could be, it's 75 degrees outside. Or it could be a list of MFCCs plus deltas and delta deltas extracted from a speech signal for a time slice. In either case, this represents an observation. So a number or a list of numbers that we've obtained through some physical measurement. So this corresponds with something in reality. That's the observation. And at every point in time, there's what we're gonna call a hidden state. So the hidden state represents the information that led to the physical observation, but we didn't directly observe. So 
the simple case for the ice cream or in the book is, is it sunny or not? Or is it winter or fall? Or is it summer or fall? So here we have states. So the states could be summer, question mark, or fall, question mark. So it's gonna be one of those two things. So you could think of this hidden state as being a coin where heads represents summer and tails represents fall. Okay, and we don't know which it was, but it's what we want to find out. So we want to find out, was it summer or was it fall on every given day? And so for every day, we're going to make an observation. So let's say. 75 degrees. Actually, you know what? Let's use the numbers from the book. So if you want to follow along, uh, this is on page 196 of the textbook. And in that example, we're not asking summer, fall. We're asking the warm season or the cool season. So is it autumn slash winter, meaning cool season, or spring slash summer, meaning the hot season. And every day we're going to take an observation. The observation is just the temperature that day. So uh, 45 degrees Celsius, uh, Fahrenheit. The next day we'll make another observation. Again, 45 degrees Fahrenheit. The next day, another observation, 46 degrees, and so on. And eventually, we took an observation that it was 70 degrees, and then 68 degrees, and so on. Now, these are our observations. For every day, for every observation, we want to know, was it cool, was it the cool season or was it the hot season? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy this guy. And for every day, I'm going to paste one of these. OK. All right. So remember, think of these as coins where cool is Heads is cool, hot is tails. So if it's heads, that means it's winter or fall. If it's tails, that means it's summer or spring. But we can't see that. This part's hidden. These are the hidden states. Let's draw a line here. So this is observed down here. This is hidden up here. So there's a couple of things that we can do now that involve probability. So we could connect these states. What do I mean by connecting? Well, I mean we could look up in an almanac or in some other data source and find out for every day for the past, let's say, 50 years, what was the temperature at noon here on each day? And we would know then from the almanac or other data source what season it was based on just what the date was. 
And if we do that, we can come up with a probability table. So the probability of one thing given another thing. Okay, so the question is, what are we gonna do? So one of the components is gonna, one of these probability tables is gonna be the probability of it being, for example, a given temperature, given that it's winter, or you could do the other way around. In practice, it actually matters, but for our purposes, we're not gonna go into detail about why you would do one condition versus the other condition. So we've got a model that tells us the probability of temperature given season or the other way around. Probability of temperature given season or probability of season given temperature. As I said, in practice, this really matters. For our purposes, it doesn't. We could also have another connection. And that is the probability of the season at a given time step on a given day, given the season the previous day. So that'll tell us what's the likelihood that we're switching from the hot season to the cool season or the cool season to the hot season. Now, in reality, this doesn't change very much. So this model, this transition model, is pretty simple here. Okay, so we've got an emission model, which is over here, one of these guys, an emission model, and a transition model. Now, Given a sequence of observations, along with an emission model and a transition model, which we can calculate from an almanac or some other data source, we can use this tool called a hidden Markov model and an algorithm called the Viterbi algorithm to reconstruct the most likely sequence of hidden states to have produced that set of observations. So the result of running the Viterbi algorithm, running the Viterbi algorithm on a hidden Markov model which is abbreviated HMM, the result of running the Viterbi algorithm on an HMM, a hidden Markov model, is that for any sequence of observations, we have a hypothesized most likely sequence of hidden states that led to that sequence of observations. So if you look at the example in the textbook on page 197, Language, Technology, and Society by Richard Sprout, you can see this reconstructed example that first it was cool, first it was the cool season, so presumably uh, winter, and then it turned to spring, and we began the warm season. So, in speech, we're not going to have a die, so the, the hidden state isn't going to be like a coin that could have either be either heads or tails. Instead, it's going to be something more like a d20, 
So if you've ever played uh, a role-playing game like Dungeons and Dragons, you can find 20-sided dice. So each of these dice in our hidden Markov model case is going to have a, a sound on one of the sides. So instead of numbering it 1 to 20, we'll put all the vowels and all the consonants of the language. And then instead of, so that'll go up here, our observations will be our feature vectors. So at each time step, we have a feature vector. We're going to have an emission model and a uh, transition model. And our emission model will tell us what's the probability if we have something like the sound A that it created a feature vector that looked like this. The transition model will say, if we are at, a, at an A at one time step, what's the likelihood that we're still at an A in the next time step? Pretty good. Time steps are pretty short, only 10 milliseconds. Vowels generally take longer than 10 milliseconds. So the probability that, that we're if we're in an A at time step A, that we're still at that sound in time step B is pretty good. So we've got the connections here. And using the Viterbi algorithm on this HMM, we will get the, the hypothesized sequence of states where each state corresponds to essentially a side on a D20. In, in practice, English has more than 20 sounds, so it would be more than a D20. But the idea is the same. So let's say for simplicity, we'll pretend that there's 26 sounds in English. There's more than 26 sounds, but we'll just pretend that there's 26. Uh, and so each of these, after running the Turby, will give us the most likely sequence of phones given the features that were extracted from the sound wave. So at this point, we have now essentially completed the acoustic model. So let's review. We've got a person who says something. Hey Siri, what's the weather today? Resulting in a complex sound wave. That sound wave is picked up by a microphone the analog to digital converter in the microphone gives us a digitized sound wave. Next, we're going to apply a fast Fourier transform, FFT, to the sound wave to get a spectrogram. which was a 3D plot of time versus frequency versus 
amplitude. We're going to break that in spectrogram into time slices. And each of those time slices we're going to call a frame. Then we're going to do feature extraction resulting in a list of 39 features per frame. These are MFCCs, Delta MFCCs, and Delta Delta MFCCs. You don't need to know the technical details of MFCCs, uh, and the only thing you need to know about deltas and delta deltas are that they are calculated as the difference from one time step to the next. These features are then going to be the input to a hidden Markov model. And the hidden Markov model will utilize the Viterbi algorithm to produce the most likely sequence of phones in the original speech signal. And that completes the acoustic model.